This is Distant Replay. Well, with Halloween coming up, we decided to focus a mini-sode on one of the great plays that happened on Halloween. It was the Billy Cannon punt return for LSU in 1959. Yeah, we got to go way back to talk about this one, but that's what we're going to do here on Distant Replay Podcast. And Mike, I threw this moment out to you. And, you know, these mini-sodes are about capturing moments more than games. And obviously, we're not going to go back and watch an entire game in 1959 because we can't find the footage of it. But there is footage of this punt return. And uh, when I threw this game out at you, what was your first reaction when I said 1959 Billy Cannon punt return? I thought this is the most SEC Ben moment ever. Like, this is the kind of thing SEC fans and you in particular, I know, love. Like, 1959 Halloween night, bitter <laughs> rivals in front of a sold out crowd at Tiger Stadium. Like, this is right up your alley. Were you aware of this play at all before? I was not. No. Okay. So, this is again, this is a play that in the SEC and especially in Louisiana, I mean, this is what everybody talks about when they're talking about the history of LSU, right? There's, and when you think about your Mets, Mike. Uh, there are obviously going to be a lot more plays there, but there's always like those couple of moments in, in the mess that just live on from generation to generation. Well, this Billy Cannon punt return, it sounds, it sounds silly, but it lived on forever, and we're going to tell you why on this episode. So he was born William Ab Cannon, by the way, in Philadelphia, Mississippi, which I didn't realize, but that's where a couple of the casinos are, where we'd always go to gamble. It's right across the state line, two hours from Tuscaloosa. Kind of an Indian reservation there, the community there. And that's where he was born and where his upbringing. Kind of a, a little uh, shaky upbringing, but decided to stay close to home. His mom wanted him to stay close to home. And he chose LSU over Ole Miss in Florida. Now, I think when you went back and uh, looked at this, Mike, you're probably surprised to see just how good Ole Miss and LSU were at this time. Yeah, for sure. So coming into this game, they're the number one and number three teams in the country. <laughs> Again, one of these rivalries that since 1894, these two teams have played each other. And I know that's pretty commonplace down there in SEC country to have these old rivalries. But coming from an area where I really like college football, but it's not a college football rich area, I'm still always like surprised to see, you know, when you put years to how storied these rivalries actually are. Yeah, Johnny Vaught was the head coach at Ole Miss, and which is you know part of the name of the stadium right now, and it gives you an idea of how good they were. But both these teams really good defensively, as Mike mentioned, came in one versus three. LSU had won the national championship the year before. Billy Cannon played a little bit of everything. He played halfback, punt returner, obviously played uh, defensive back. He, he was kind of all over the field, and I think he finished third the year before in the Heisman race. So this guy's a well-known player and, and one of the one of the greats in the conference and in college football and set up this game. So to kind of give you some perspective of what was happening to set up this punt return, both these defenses were, at the time, you know, football is much different, but both these defenses were lights out, right? It was difficult to score. You look down the, like the, the scores for LSU that season, they had given up just a handful of points, six points, I think, in their first six games or seven games, whatever it was, before this Ole Miss game. So they don't give up any points. But Ole Miss on the other side – was the same way. They gave a touchdown to Tulane a couple weeks earlier. Every other game was a shutout. So these games were just shutouts basically every time. So they came into this game. These teams were punting back and forth, Mike. Going back and reading about this game, Ole Miss was punting on early downs, even first down sometimes. Yeah, there was a couple, you know, the, the head coach for uh, Mississippi, who you mentioned, you know, he was so disgusted with his offense. Like you mentioned, he started punting on first down <laughs> punting, you? And, and, and punting on early downs throughout the game, which again, it's just a completely different way to play football that to be honest, you can't even identify with now. And Mississippi, basically they decided to go with this strategy because they hit a field goal early and went up three, nothing. And this was their way to sit on the lead. It's, it's incredible. Like you read the, the story about it like, and it worked because LSU fumbled the ball four times, but Vaught completely abandoned his offensive game. He he was punting again on first downs, and Cannon said like they just kept punting the ball and sticking us back in a hole. And finally, he was like, "Look, if I can get my hands on one of these, I'm going to take it back." And that kind of takes us to where we were in that fourth quarter. LSU was down three nothing, fourth and seventeen from the Ole Miss forty two. They had a pretty good punter too. It wasn't like you know you watch these old highlights and the guy was kicking at fifteen twenty yards. I mean. This guy was booming him 40-plus uh, pretty consistently. And he must have been, obviously, a trusted player because they continued to punt just about every time they got the football here. You can take it back. But 
they punted it down, and this was supposed to go out of bounds. He's supposed to kick it away from Billy Cannon, kick it out of bounds. The ball took a hop right around the 11-yard line, and Cannon was also supposed to just not field it. If the ball is that close to the end zone, head coach Paul Deitzel said, look, don't touch it, let it roll out. Pretty standard football rules. But Billy, as I mentioned, was like, look, if I get a chance, I'm taking it. He fields it. And as his head coach remembered, he said it went from saying, Billy, no, 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 to Billy, go, go, go. He, if you watch the run, and we're going to – maybe we should tweak this out, Mike. The, the, the replay of the, the, the punt is pretty impressive. I mean, he, he breaks seven tackles along the way and takes this thing back to the house, races 60 yards, the last 60 yards untouched, giving LSU that 7-3 lead. Place went nuts. Gave the lead. They were actually able to hold on. And it more amazingly, is probably later in the game, they actually got a, a goal line stand, which Billy Cannon was involved in the tackle at the one yard line to keep LSU, keep LSU in the lead, prevent Ole Miss from taking the lead late in that game. They walked off with the victory. And this 7 3 victory, Mike, lives in infamy thanks to that Halloween punt return. Yeah, this is a punt return. And go back and watch the video. And like you said, we'll tweet this out and throw it up on Instagram if we can. Like, this punt, he was pinned. This punt return wasn't one where, like, the guy catches the ball and he's got a whole bunch of a field in front of him. He, the, the punter punted it where it kind of pinned the Billy Cannon on the sideline. And like you said, he weaved in and out of and broke numerous tackles for this punt return. It was a legitimately good punt return. And like you said, one of these things that lives in, in LSU lore – and one of these plays that I, if you ask a, a 15-year-old LSU fan in 2020 <laughs> about Billy Cannon's punt return, you know, he can tell you about it. It's one of those plays. They, he would end up going on to win the Heisman this year in 59. LSU would not win the national championship again. They would actually have a rematch later in the year with Ole Miss. Now, they did lose to Tennessee beforehand. They had a, a, a rematch with Ole Miss in the Sugar Bowl, which was played in Tulane Stadium at that point. And Ole Miss dominated 21 nothing in that game to win uh, another. Well, they won so, one uh, national championship. Syracuse also got awarded the national championship as well that season. But what's so amazing about this play, Mike, and, and you know, you, you've never heard about it, okay, growing up in you know, the Northeast. This is a play that plays, and I don't know if it still does to this day in 2020, but for the longest time and probably still does today, they play this punt on the video board before football games. <laughs> and you, you, you specifically threw that in there to get me to laugh because you know that like look if you got if anyone out there has never been to an sec game when you were when you're talking about like the lore of sec teams like i've been down there with ben to watch games like this is how it is like people sit around and talk about the history of their school and big moments like this so it does not surprise me at all that this is shown on the video board and it's, it's, it's actually refreshing when you hear it, Ben, I'll never forget that time. We were literally sitting around a fire one night when I went down there the night before a game and Alabama fans and alumni sitting around sharing stories about Alabama, you know, moments of yesteryear. It was like, it, it was a total mind blow for me in a good way. And then look, Alabama was the same way. I mean, this is how you, you capture the tradition, right? The history of your school. That's, that's what makes the SEC different, kind of special gets passed on. But I mean, Alabama shows, and they show them from years they won national championships, but they show plays that are hard to actually distinguish up on the video board because the footage is so old. So it's, <laughs> it's very similar. But yeah, I mean, this play, you mentioned Billy Cannon to an LSU fan. They're going to know exactly who you're talking about. They're going to know the year that the play happened, what the play happened, who the play was against, all that stuff. And, it, and this was just over 60 years ago. So what's even crazier, Mike, too, by the way? Halloween night, 20 years later, 20 years later, exactly. Billy Cannon's son, Billy Cannon Jr., returned to punt for a touchdown in high school. And it came against his dad's alma mater. How about that? Talk about big shoes to fill, being Billy Cannon's son and having his same name. Oof. Hey, what he, huge he went shoes on. To he, fill. He, he did get drafted in the first round. Did he? By the okay, Cowboys. There you go. But he was a first round pick by the Cowboys in 84 out of AM. <laughs> so there you go. Billy Cannon Jr. He didn't he didn't go to he didn't go to LSU. Billy Cannon Jr. No, he did not. Interesting. Which is pretty crazy, right? All right, some other quick hits for you from this. As legend has it, at practice the night before the game, LSU students surrounded the Mississippi practice field and taunted them, right? <laughs> this is stuff we can't confirm, but this is this is the old <laughs> lore. This was called the game of the year, and it was such an important game 
that allegedly someone offered up their wife to get tickets. Okay. <laughs> Again, these, these SEC lore type things that I'm sure it lives on message boards still to this day. And then what I didn't realize is in all seriousness, this is Mississippi. Mississippi wins the national championship in 59, 60 and 62. So a little bit of a, of a heyday for Mississippi football here as well. I just definitely peak. Ole Miss this time, and this is their run and why Vaught's still thought of the way he is today, but the problem is they didn't really have much success uh, beyond the 60s. They've had a couple good years, but this was their heyday, and they were great year in, year out during this time. But, yeah, those are some great stories about trying to get into that game and being a part of that. But they were, you know, this is this is 59. You don't think about, like, football being huge, but even at this time, this, this stadium was packed, what, 60,000 people or so. And I'm sure I'm sure there's probably 200,000 people in uh, in Louisiana that tell the story about how they were there in uh, in, in Tiger Stadium for Billy Cannon's punt return. Yeah, for sure. And just one of these moments. I'm glad you picked this one because this was this is funny to look back on. And and honestly, I like learning stuff. Right. It's, it's a big reason why we do this podcast. Is it's so cool to look back and learn new things. And this I learned something new here. Halloween night, 1959. That was the Billy Cannon punt return. The Billy Cannon run, and you can find it. Just search Billy Cannon. This will be the first result you'll see, and it is a, a big part of LSU's tradition and history. And remember, too, by the way, as we close this out, 1958, the year before they won the, won the national championship, that was their only national championship until Nick Saban won in 2003. Just to kind of give you a sense of the program, why that play and Billy Cannon is held in such high regard, because he was the guy and, and part of their best year and only national championship for the longest time. When we looked back, we did the Alabama LSU game of the century from 2011. That was one of the things we hit on, if you remember, the lack of the lack of big time success that LSU has actually had over the years. It was surprising to me. Indeed. So, hope you learned something new, like Mike did on the Billy Cannon run, and, and just another element of SEC football. So, this has been a mini soda of Distant Replay Podcast. You can find us online at distantreplaypodcast.com, on Twitter, on Instagram on YouTube. We'd love to hear your feedback. Send us a game if you want us to watch, and we'll put it on the list. Mike, enjoyed it. Same here. And Ben, it just means more.